Hi, this is Bonnie Marquis, Autism Specialist with the West Virginia Autism Training Center, here to talk with you about the principles of positive parenting with ASD during this unique and very difficult time. We know the special challenges of ASD mean the recent and massive disruptions to daily life have been particularly difficult, to say the least. We are all doing the best we can and hope this information leads you to reflect and find either reassurance that you are indeed doing enough, more than enough, or perhaps a little inspiration to try some new ideas that might help ease your day and help your family as you survive through this crisis. The change in daily routine has been a challenge for all of us, but every ASD parent has experienced difficulties when even seemingly minor disruptions happen. And while you probably won't be able to duplicate the structure and routine of the school day, it is critical to maintain as much rhythm and predictability as you can. Whether you choose to follow a strict schedule using the clock to guide your day, or if you need the flexibility of a routine where you do, in general, the day's order, but the time spent on each may vary depending on the challenges and opportunities presented. In either case, embedding choice into the day is key to improving cooperation, building a bit of independence, and also giving your child an appropriate level of autonomy and control. And of course, the choices offered matter, and there are many opportunities to help guide your child or teen as they go about their day. Establishing rules and expectations, but giving them ownership over their selections and contributions and visual supports help everyone with rules and routines. And indeed, we could provide an entire, an entire training on this topic alone. And we do, in fact, have some great resources on our website and Pinterest page. But if I had to pick my favorite strategy in the positive parenting toolbox, it would be that of the first then contingency. Presenting it visually helps maintain focus and motivation through an unwanted task, but even more casual approach modeled and presented verbally can make this a powerful method for getting kids to meet our expectations. First we'll clean up this mess together and then we'll go outside. But also be aware that you are likely going to need to give more help and support across the board than you were before. The stress and anxiety of this time may make their usual level of performance unrealistic. So set expectations that have a high likelihood of success so that you can build on that positive outcome knowing you might have to offer lots of help or lower the bar a bit. Even typical kids are regressing a little, whining more, wanting more done for them, and it's natural for them to want to return to a simpler time, and it's okay to indulge that to a point. Just maintain the principle that we are all in this together and we are all doing the best we can. Everyone is struggling with some degree of uncertainty but a lack of understanding and an inability to predict are central issues for those with ASD, so it can be helpful to make an effort to build as much understanding as you can. And social stories are a great evidence-based strategy for doing this, and we've already shared several on our website on various pandemic topics. And while we should do all we can to build as much predictability as possible, we caution you against making any promises you can't keep. It's tempting to offer something to look forward to, but you may be inviting a meltdown if circumstances do not allow you to follow through. And I know plenty of adults, typical adults, that are not coping well with this, so it's no surprise that some of our guys are having trouble. But I have been truly impressed with the innovative ways that some of my families have found to modify and maintain their favorite rituals. Although to be sure, some will find these attempts inadequate and frustrating, so it's important to acknowledge and be ready for that. As parents, we need to allow our children to be upset. It's an understandable and natural response right now. But learning how to express upsets without turning aggressive or hurtful is a vital skill and is important to understand that these kids may need physical outlets to process and move past their feelings. And at this time, there will be frustration, probably a lot of it, and much of it aimed at you as you try to take on the role of teacher. Don't try to expect too much from yourself or for your child to flexibly adapt. Keep your expectations reasonable and put more effort into other activities that are more interesting and engaging, but still educational and worthwhile. For older students, you may have more success if you focus on your role as coach or cheerleader confident that they can do it or some portion of it, and support them in learning to ask the teacher for help if they can. 
And if you are also attempting to work from home, it's okay to rely on more screen time than you ever thought possible to fill the gaps and simply try to be selective about it as there are some really great resources out there. There is a vital connection between sensory experiences and our emotions and one's ability to focus and behave as we want or expect. Understanding this connection and applying sensory-based strategies is a very effective and powerful tool and builds vital coping skills. It's important to know and understand your child's sensory profile, what calms them, engages them, or triggers a meltdown. For Noah, that would be certain loud noises and being, un and being unexpectedly wet. Wet, on his terms, is just fine. Of course, an OT can be really helpful in this area, but if you don't have access to one, there are a number of great resources, including the Zones of Regulation program, which is great for giving a conceptual framework for communicating and coaching your child as needed. Some folks may also want to check out the app and resources at Brainworks, the sensational brain, for what some have described as like having an OT in your pocket. And as the parents, we also need to find ways to take care of ourselves, and that is far from easy. Whatever strategies resonate with you and work in the context of your family, incorporating these into some sort of routine will help you prioritize the health and well-being of you and your family. And whether they are done alone so you have some much-needed time to yourself, or in more of partnership or group activity that brings your child into the task and sets them up to learn vital skills for daily living. If you want to learn more about self-care and building responsibility, you can check out the Technical Assistance Center's YouTube channel connected from our website. So we have very briefly touched on some basic principles for surviving and thriving during what is truly an unprecedented time. And while we can assure you these principles are sound, we understand that the difficulty lies in selecting the details which means it's up to each family to decide what the rules and routines will look like and what tools and strategies will work in your situation. As mentioned previously, we have more detailed information on both visual supports and sensory solutions, as well as specific social stories related to this pandemic. We hope that you will check them out and please contact us with any questions or comments. We'd love to hear how you are doing and please stay safe.